Hey, it's Dad, Horror Movie Dad here, and welcome to a brand new Dad and De Niro Discussions. It's 2022. It's January 2nd, and it's our first D3 of the year. That's great. It's wonderful. Let's have some fun. Joined a little bit late today, about two minutes late. Kate and Arrow hit me up and said, hey, I don't think I'm going to get on till about 9.05. And I was like, you know what? It's not going to stop me from getting on at 9 p.m. like I'm supposed to. He can tell you why he had to get on at 9.05. Nutpacks in the house. How you doing, bro? So... I decided to break out something, uh, a little bit of a different mixture today for our discussion. Uh, we are discussing Hider in the House. If you haven't seen it, it came out in 1989. Gary Busey. It was a good one. A fun watch. But I'm not going to get into that right now because Kate De Niro needs to join me first before I can start Dad and De Niro discussions. So I'm not going to discuss the movie we are supposed to be discussing right now until he comes on. But if he waits too long, you know, I'll give him to 9.05. But if he waits too long, we're just going to jump right into it. Because you know what? We got shit to do, don't we? We scheduled this thing and we're going to do it. So, welcome everyone who has joined. Lily Byrne, how you doing? Hopefully I said that right. So usually when we do these D3s, I'm always sipping on something. So... Let's get into what I'm sipping on today. So here we go. It's my signature glass. I got a Crown Royal glass. I'm normally sipping on some brandy, but today I'm slipping on... Slipping? <laughs> I'm sipping on some gin, okay? So, but it's a little bit different. I got going on. Happy New Year to both to both of you. Nutpack, Lily, thanks for joining. Kate and Nero should be joining us shortly. We're discussing Hyder in the house. So um, anyway, as, as I was saying, yeah, it's a little bit discolored for gin, right? But there's a reason to that. So this is what I'm drinking. I'm drinking the original Old Hollywood Gin from Napa Valley Distillery. So this is it here, okay? Even though you can, re it's probably being read backwards or something. I don't know. But anyway, so this is from Napa Valley in California. Um, it's fun. It's fun. Oh, Take Off With Me is, has joined me here. But Take Off With Me, how you doing? We're waiting for Kay De Niro to join us. So once Kay De Niro joins us, we will start. So anyway, as I was saying, Napa Valley Distillery is in Napa Valley. It's excellent stuff. I'm a member of their club. They send me like three different brandies monthly or gins or whatever. So, Kay De Niro has joined us. So, here we go. View request. Go live with one. What's up, bro? Hey. How you doing, man? What's up, buddy? How you been? I'm good. You like, uh, I got my uh, screen back in action. Yeah, finally. I don't, I don't know what happened. All right. First off, I want to give a shout out to everybody that, that's watching right now. So, hold on. Let's see. Uh, shout out to Nutpack and shout out to Lily. Thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate you guys. We love you guys. Thank you. And Guitar Bic just joined. Do you see that? Can you see? Shout the out to Guitar Bic. Can you see the comments and stuff this time? You always have problems seeing the. Um, I I don't think I, I I just see Guitar Bic just joined, so I don't okay. see any comments. Good because you're pretty good at. Uh keeping control of the comments while we talk i'm kind of bad with that so but uh i was just before i was just saying um i was explaining what i was drinking and i was i had some gin and i and i put some of this crap in it some of this honey lavender bitter into my oh, gin. Nice. i put this into my gin and it's actually pretty good you put it straight into your gin yeah so i'm I, this is gin straight gin gin neat huh Gin You're neat. drinking gin neat. Gin neat, bro, with a couple drops of this honey lavender bitter. And 
We lost Kenny. So, but anyway, this is what's going on here. So, it's not bad. This bitter stuff usually usually goes in to mix drinks and stuff, but I've done it in the gin before. It's pretty good. So, not bad. Kenny's joining us again. Back. I'm back. I'm back. My bad. What, what, what did you do? Going on? I don't know, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, <laughs> hey, bro. Happy New Year, bro. Happy New Year's. And um, I, I was checking to see, basically, um, before we do anything, it's to 2022. We've been doing this since 2019, right? Yeah. Um, no, or is it 2020? We've been doing this since 2020. Yeah. 2020. We've already. Okay, hold on. Shout out to uh, Red Bomb Triple Three just joined. Um, thank you for joining me and uh, Horror Movie Dad. And uh, we were just saying uh, Happy New Year's to everybody that's watching. And uh, yeah, man. Um, happy fucking New Year's, dude. Yeah, Happy New Year, bro. It's uh, so we first did this our first live. Well, I don't know the actual live date, but I posted it on YouTube on May 19th, 2020. So that was started this thing up. So we're getting close to a two-year mark. we got a few months, and we'll hit a two-year mark, bro. So Yeah, absolutely. So, but, um, but, yeah, Happy New Year. First one of the year. First D3 of the year. I'm like first D3. Strong. So um, I guess we'll get right into it, what we're discussing. And uh, – I chose this one this time. It's yep, you did. Called Hider in the House. Start I have a lot of I have a lot of things to say about this movie. Yeah. Starting starting. Can't speak today. Starring Gary Busey. All right. I thought you said scary Busey. <laughs> did you say Gary Busey or horrible. scary Busey? No, I said I said Gary Busey, but Oh, okay, okay. My bad. <laughs> no, no, that works. It's better. <laughs> it's perfect for the movie. So it's uh, it's uh, released in 1989, and here's a little synopsis and tagline here. You can't lock him out. He's already in. A deranged man hides in the attic of a new house and becomes obsessed with the unsuspecting family that moves in. And guess who that person is? It's Scary Busey. Scary Busey. <laughs> Well, we find out, I mean, you know, basically the uh, the intro says so much about this movie, you know. It's the dialogue of a broken home. There's an angry husband. There's, you know, uh, fighting between the mom and the dad. And, you know, his name is Thomas. Um, we find out that Thomas can't take the shit anymore and ends up burning the house down and burning both of his parents alive. Alive, and this is all a prologue that you can just hear. You don't see it happening, you hear it happening. It's probably one of the fastest killings I've ever seen in a movie, because <laughs> already two people are dead, dude. Right, right. But basically, this kid Thomas, or Tommy, was, uh, was stuck in a, an abusive relationship by his parents. So that's how... So now it paints the picture of... Gary, aka Scary, Scary Busey, coming in. I like that. I do. Hey, you came up with that one, bro. <laughs> Ends up with him coming in, and basically is an he's an older man now. Probably looks like he's in his what thirties, maybe mid thirties, late thirties, right? Yeah, uh, I believe he was thirty three. Yeah, thirty three was that his thirty three in the movie. But we know damn well Scary Busey is in his, mm, I'd say, high to mid-40s when he did this movie, bro. Oh, oh yeah. So, for sure. And this was, this is, this, he still, he still had, he still had actor's face. Face didn't go sideways like it is now, so. <laughs> anyway, um, so we find out that he was in a mental hospital for a long time. And, for a long time. And he was talking to a psychiatrist where he had mandatory sessions as a psychiatrist. And the psychiatrist was um, kind of skeptical about him going out in the real world. So kind of what happens next here, bud? Um, well, 
Scary Busey, a.k.a. Thomas Syke. Yeah, his name is Thomas Syke. Thomas Sykes. Sykes. Thomas Sykes, yes. Didn't I think we all knew a guy at Bellerman named uh, Brandon Sykes, was it? Was it that? Yeah. Yeah, he was like, I remember in track, he was like all super cocky. He thought he was the shit and like fucking. Brian. He wore, he, Brian Sykes. Oh, it was Brian Sykes, yeah. And every time he warmed up on the track, he like thought he was like a fucking gold winner, like Olympic gold fucking sprinter. Anyways, that's he neither here or there. He saucy like that in basketball, too. And yeah. Like well, hey. So, Thomas but, Sykes. Thomas Sykes. It, it's so funny about this movie. He gets out of his psychiatry session, and he's just walking, minding his own business, and just so happens to see the perfect, like, the perfect house. White picket fence, white house, like, and he just, like, falls in love, love with it. And it's so funny because it just goes from him staring at the house, and then, bam, he's inside just making a room in the attic. Like, what the fuck? Like... <laughs> Like, okay, I like that house. I'm going to make a room in there. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's a big attic, too. And he, like, confines the attic to one spot. So he gets a little spot in there, bro. And, <laughs> dude, I, you mentioned that it just cuts to scene. This movie cuts to a scene so quickly that you almost think it's the same scene. <laughs> oh, I know. But, dude, it's so ridiculous. It's like, it's like, um... He, he goes into the attic, and it's like he has, like, fucking seven two-by-fours. It's just he's holding seven two-by-fours, and then, bam, he's got himself a fucking extra room. Like, he's all like, what the fuck? Like, like th th this is when I started noticing this movie had so many flaws in it, and I'm just like, oh, fuck, here we go. <laughs> let's, let's see how this one pans out. So, yes, there are many flaws, but I thought, I thought the acting was pretty good. The With acting, their... you know what? The acting was good. Um, it, 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 it was almost like um, a Lifetime movie, bro. Like, it wasn't, it's not, it's not even like a horror movie. It was like a Lifetime movie that you'd watch, like, you know, about a, a troubled child who grew up in the uh, psych ward. And he, he has these, you know, he used to be a pyromaniac and he has to... Um, he has to be, you know what it's called? It's called frogging. What okay. he did is called frogging. It's when okay. people, when people live in your house and you don't even know it mm -hmm. and they do everything like when you're gone and they eat your food and they fucking, uh, there was a movie that I saw on Amazon Prime. It was called, uh, fuck, what was that movie? It's about frogging and uh, Helen Hunt is in it. I can't remember the name. If anybody knows the name of that movie, um, yeah, it's about frogging. But that's what he's doing. He's basically frogging in their house, and he has this fucking gadget that he probably got from Doc from Back to the Future to help him listen to fucking conversations in the house. Like, what the fuck? Like, where did he get this instrument? Yeah, yeah, where that that's the question is like where does he get all this stuff that he has? Bro, right? I know where he, he I know where he got the instrument. Oh. He went to the same place where the uh the same place where you can get a mogwai. <laughs> he went to the same <laughs> shop owned by that fucking ink. Yeah. This long pipe coming down to here. <laughs> yeah. He's all I need something to help me listen to other people's conversations. And then, you know, he tries, he, first he offers him a mogwai, and he's like, no, I don't need that. I want something that, so I can listen to people in their houses when I'm froggy. <laughs> Dude, but the thing is, it's like, where does he get money? Does he have a job? No. <laughs> job. How does he have such nice clothes, too, by the way? He dresses up nicely. Bro, like did you, did, how bro, does he, he knows, not, where does he take a shower? <laughs> he does it. Where does he use the bathroom? Obviously when they're in their house, like, when they're not looking? I don't know. What if he has to drop a deuce, bro? <laughs> Dude, it's going to be a ghost dump the opposite way to where they walk in the bathroom. Like, why does it smell like shit in here? Do you think he just, you think he opens up the window in that little attic that he has and, like, pees out the window? <laughs> like, just pees out the window. And it's like, well, hey.
They're not going to know. They're not knowing I'm here. Fuck it. I'm just going to. Or maybe he just pisses in a corner. He just chooses a corner and just pisses in it. Maybe, but it would stink like pee after a while. Bro, he's probably like, it's not my house. I don't give a shit. <laughs> so anyway, it was a house at the time, and this family moves in. They have two kids, and it's a husband and a wife. Seems like a happy family. Seems. He, Seems like a happy family. Right, right. And so... um he becomes uh, very interested in the wife, like extremely, like stocky, interesting, is interested in the wife. But before, but before he becomes very interestingly stocky in the wife, he almost has like, it's very depressing, bro, because like when he first gets there, he's like a little kid living out his family. Like he's living out the family that he never had because he came from like a broken home. So it's like, he would start to repeat things. Like, he'd be like, okay, mommy, I love you, going to bed now. And he'd be up there and he goes, I love you, mommy, going to bed now. Like, I, I don't know if it's exactly those same words, but yeah. he, would repeat, he would repeat shit so that he felt like he was in the home, like he was actually from a really good home. But actually, in reality, 40 minutes into the movie, we know that this family is not such a happy family after all and you know what i i thought i began i was beginning to like uh tom in this movie because <laughs> because you thought he he cared you know what he i mean looked like he genuinely cared for the family hold, hold on one second one yeah. second i want to give a shout out to my motherfucking dog my homie danny for prez danny for prez i see you thank you for joining i hope i hope you just i hope you didn't just go in and go out but love you dog thank you what's up danny thanks for joining us so uh that sip didn't go down right <laughs> <laughs> anyway um it's a lot harder to drink this than it is to drink my brandy truthfully um what was i gonna say oh yeah anyway um, it, it makes you seem he seems like a nice guy and he, genuinely nice guy. He goes, he tucks the daughter in at night when the father doesn't. He goes and he, he saves the da daughter from falling in the pool by getting the ball and stuff like that. And it's just like, and he helps, he helps the son from a being beat up by a bully. It's like he's helping the family and he thinks he's a part of the family, but the family doesn't know that he's a part of the family. So but he's, it also, he's yeah. also very, he's also very sociopathic because yeah. He will kill anything that comes in his way with no remorse uh -huh. that, that, will, that will cause his frogging of him reliving his family that he never had. So right. when the dog went up the stairs, right? We know yeah. he kills the dog and he's a bastard for doing that. Fuck you, Scary Busey, for killing that dog. Fuck you, Thomas Sykes. It wasn't Scary Busey. It was Tom Sykes. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> And so, uh, and then there's an exterminator scene, which was super funny. I thought the exterminator scene was hilarious because yeah. he's like blowing smoke in the attic, right? And all of a sudden, like you see Gary Busey, like he can't take it anymore. And he comes out and he like strangles him. And dude, that was the absolute fastest way you could bury someone ever, bro. <laughs> like it goes from, he puts him in a headlock and then he's like, he's like, oh man, now. Oh God! Thank God that's over with. And he just puts the shovel like on the de like on the deck. I'm like, wait, what? You bury him already? <laughs> that was hell fast, dude. I'm sure it takes a long time to bury somebody. Hold uh, on. Shout out to Mojo. Shout out to Mojo One Thirty. Shout out to North Bay Eighty Two. North Bay Eighty Two. You are definitely uh, alumni and a veteran when it comes to watching D3. So thank you for joining us. We we're talking about the movie Hider in the House. And for some reason, when I first thought I, when I first thought it, when I first saw it, I thought it said Hitler in the house. Yes, I was, I was waiting for you to mention that. <laughs> I was like, wait, Mojo. Hitler in the house? Yeah, Mojo's my cousin Joe. So thanks for Oh, thanks. what's up, Joe? <laughs> so, but yeah, that, so when I the funny thing is when I told Kenny, oh yeah, we're gonna be watching Hyder in the House for our next D three, and he goes, so he, he, it takes him a while to text me back, like maybe a couple hours, and he goes, 
No, I thought I, the, when I first looked at it, I thought it was Hitler in the house. <laughs> Dude, how funny a- would it, bro? How funny would it be if I if, <laughs> if I could do it? Hitler? <laughs> if we turned instead of if you if you somehow like CGI like you turned Gary Busey into Hitler and it was Hitler the whole time, <laughs> like reliving like reliving his like past and he's like like. He's like, nine, 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 nine. He's like, the whole, like being Hitler in the fucking. <laughs> the whole movie replaced Gary Busey with Hitler. Yeah, bro, but Gary Busey would act as Hitler. Okay. <laughs> he'd have his hair, like, like dyed <laughs> fucking black, and then he'd have the stash. Yeah, oh, my God. All right, now we're getting, we're getting out of control, bro. We're out of control. Control. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Hitler in the house. You can, so you can tell right from the beginning how um, Tom, who it, it is crazy because what what does he go? He goes into that. Where does he go? He goes into that. Uh, I don't know where he's at. Maybe he's in the 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 psych ward somewhere or something. And the guy's smoking a cigarette, and he tells him to watch that cigarette. Oh, because in the beginning of the movie, yeah. it showed his dad. His dad yeah. would put cigarettes out on him. That was right. fucked up. That was burning cigarettes on him. So he's talking to some random guy who was smoking a cigarette, and he was getting way too close to him. He's like, can you watch that cigarette? And he does it again, and he grabs his throat. He's like, I said, can you watch that cigarette? <laughs> Classic <laughs> Gary Busey moment. Right. Right. And whenever I see Gary Busey, I always – my, my favorite mute movie with Gary Busey in it – Hold on. Is, I think I know. What? Predator 2. That's one of them. Okay, no, what is it? Surviving the Game. Oh, shit. With Ice T. That movie is Dude. Such an underrated movie. When Ice T had the fucking Yaman dreads. You know? Yeah. Dude, that's a very, very, very underrated movie. It, not, not many, not many um, critics even cared for it, but. That was a good one, dude. That was surviving good... the game, right? Yeah, yeah. I, what? I, I might. I'm think I'm gonna watch that movie tonight. Yeah, dude. That's 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 a fucking awesome movie, dude. So, um, dude, Scary Busey was hella good though. He was really good in Predator Two though. He oh. he like Predator Two, and I really feel like, in my honest opinion, Predator the first Predator is so fucking good, so oh. good, but. For some small reason, I still hold Predator 2 close to my heart because it had, uh, who was in it? Danny Glover was in it. He played, like, basically the same kind of role he did in Lethal Weapon. Right. He's just kind of like, a, not like, a, like, he's still a cop, but he's kind of old. And Gary Busey is the fucking crazy fucking spazzy fucking fed that just is just you know like i'll i'll, I'll never forget the moment oh, remember when gary oh, remember, yeah. oh, oh. <laughs> remember when gary Busey is in the fucking meat he, he's like in this meat fucking factory and it's the first time when you really see the predator and he uses that disc and the yeah. fucking disc goes through all the fucking um the carcasses and then fucking yeah. and then doesn't gary Busey get it Right there? Yeah. yeah. Man, such a classic fucking scene, dude. Predator 2 is very underrated as well. Very underrated. And it's- I love the fact that they have the uh, Easter egg when um, Gary Busey go, or no, 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 Gary Busey. When Danny Glover goes into the Predator spaceship and you see all the skulls he collects and it's like the beginning of the Alien vs. Predator era, which I'm not a big fan of, but still, I thought it was cool. Want to know what's tied about Predator 2 as well? Is the that, sex scene? Is that Bill Paxton is in it as well. Oh, that's right, huh? Guess what? He is, he's the only person to get killed by an alien and a predator. Bill Paxton. You know what? You're, you're, you're right. Shit. I mean, wow. Game over, man. The game over, man. We lose. <laughs> Rest in peace, Bill Paxton. We love you, dude. Yes. Anyway, um, where Wasn't were Bill we? Paxton 
in Terminator 2, the first one? Yeah, at the beginning. He gets killed by a Terminator 2. So he's been killed by a Terminator, a Predator, and an alien. Yeah, he does. We, Dude. Need, to get the, we need to confirm this. Oh, no, it, it's already confirmed. We know that all, that he was killed in all those movies by a Terminator, Alien, and a Predator. Okay, okay. And oh, wasn't yeah. Bill Paxton, was it Bill, oh, shit, Gary Busey was in Point Break. Oh, he was. That's a great movie. Great movie. Yes. Dude, very good slept on Keanu Reeves movie with uh, Kurt, no, no, not Kurt Russell, fucking uh, Ghost, what's his name? Yeah, uh, uh, Roadhouse. Fuck. Fuck, yeah, what's, what's his name? <laughs> it'll come. Uh, it'll come to us. Now it's gonna piss me off, dude. Oh, Patrick dude. Swayze. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I knew I'd get it. Yeah, he was good. I in knew I'd get it. All right, so okay. Oh, let's go back to the movie. We're gonna go back to the movie. You know what was hella fucking funny about this movie that was very like realistically funny what? is that when when Thomas Sykes buried the fucking exterminator, he, out of panic, he had to return. He had to return to the psych ward, but instead of walking how he normally does, he gets in the exterminator van and does not know how to drive. And so he just gets in the fucking van and somehow, magically, he ends up going back to the fucking psych ward, not knowing how to drive. Clearly, and, the man does not know how to drive. And you know how that came full circle? What? How? It, it came full circle because what's because the police called, uh, what's her name? Julie is the wife, asking her if she ever, fe- if she knew where the exterminator was because he never came back to work. And <laughs> and neighbor says, I saw the exterminator leaving, but he was really, really drunk because he was swerving all over the road. <laughs> he was drunk. So, Led to the conclusion that he was really drunk and probably got into a car accident and died. <laughs> Bro, how creepy! How creepy was that neighbor? Bro, we we didn't even we didn't even talk about the part. Okay, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Wait, oh, but I first, got notes. I took I took notes, bro. Took notes. Okay. Uh, first, when he was exterminating, dude. I want to look back into 1989 and to see if they really need that huge unnecessary smoke blower to exterminate rodents. <laughs> That's not true, right? That there has to be. Okay, no hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. No- <laughs> so there, there's a few things that we forgot to say. Um, there was a very weird scene where Gar- Scary Busey, a.k.a. Thomas Sykes, was in his fucking frogging fucking hole upstairs in the attic. And he had like a, a weird rabbit leg keychain and he like took the keychain and he like just smothered it on his face. He was just like, <laughs> like just like what the fuck? It was like a dick, like like somebody like, like it was like an imaginary dick, just like it was like a just dick. like slapping and fucking rubbing all over his face. The way he put it on, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Do you remember that? Yes. It was so weird. I was like, what are you doing with that? With that <laughs> fucking rabbit leg? What's up, Hora Callahan Hill? Thanks for joining. Yo, 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 yo. Yes, thank you for joining. And then, hold on. He would make, there's also, he would make mini figurines of the people in the house, and he had an actual house built. And um, there's a scene, which I thought was so fucking funny, is, and there's there's like at least three scenes where, or four scenes where uh, Thomas Sykes is a complete fucking pervert. And the first one is when the wife, Julie, goes into the pool at nighttime and he starts looking at her and he's like, like he, the way he looks at her in the pool is like he's looking at a Playboy magazine. And while right. he's looking at her, he noticed the neighbor is looking at her too, like a <laughs> fucking pervert. Right? <laughs> Bro, and then there was a cringy, there's the, the most cringiest scene of the movie is when <laughs> Gary Busey shows up and the neighbor shows up at the same time, and they're just like competing for her. And I was just like, "Oh, this is so fucking cringy! Like, <laughs> what the fuck?" And then like 
he, she, uh, Julie tries to grab something from the uh, cupboard. Like, she gets, like, salt or sugar, whatever the fuck it is. And he, like, the, the creepy neighbor puts his hand, like, on her, the back side of her waist. Yeah. And, like, uh, Thomas Sykes grabs the hand. He's like, don't you do that. I was like, what does he say? Hold on. I wrote the notes. He says, uh, what, the, what the fuck does he say? Oh, shit. He says, hey, he goes, he goes like this, he goes, hey, hey. He's all, hey, 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 hey. Do you remember that part? He's, he grabs his, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> hey, all I got to say is Tom, which is Gary Busey's playing Tom, all right? All I got to say is Tom was a completely sly throughout the entire movie. He pulled off this whole ordeal of getting to the getting to the wife very smoothly and i was pretty impressed about how smoothly he was able to get the wife to find out that um her husband was cheating on her mm -hmm. to to getting the neighbor out of there to to like helping setting, the son setting, bully. Him, setting her cheating husband up in the same right. hotel room right like setting like and then being in the right place to save her son from being beat up by a bully it was just like, he was like, he painted a perfect picture. And then I'm like, dude, you got her, bro. She's going to be yours, dude. She is going to be yours, and you can pull it off, and she'll never know you're living in the attic. You can figure out a way to get around it, and she'll be yours. And then he fucks it all up by, be, by being so angry. With you her. know what happens? You, you know what happens? Thomas, you're a sly guy. And I got to right. give it to you, man. You lived in that house for, for I don't know, a few weeks or whatnot. But you know when you fucked up is when you got your feelings involved, buddy. Right. And that's when you started getting messy. And then when you started getting messy, you started getting too involved with Julie. And you, you started thinking with the wrong head. Right. Dude, it was, it was perfect because he was, he was coming in so sly and giving her her space, right? And she's like, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, ground and he goes he doesn't force it and he, he leaves but that one time to where she said no she didn't want to see a movie with him he couldn't take it anymore and he got angry and started beating on the door i'm like dude you're done you're done you screwed it all up and then he notices which was very ironic is the son starts hating his own dad and he has a moment where he's in the attic right and right. he he sees the son with like a Ken Barbie doll or like a G.I. Joe figurine. Right. And he like starts setting it on fire. And I'm like, oh, wow, really? Like, okay, I see what you're doing here, but I get it. And then like the son like just throws it. And then all of a sudden this fucking, uh, this couch covered in a fucking white bed sheet turns on fire. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Dude, do you cover, okay. I don't know about you, but I, I have I have like you know like shit in my garage like chairs and um, like rocking chairs and just bullshit. But they're not covered in white bed sheets, dude. Yeah, they do that so they don't get dust on them. I know, but it's just like I don't know. I mean, do people like is that like I don't know? Maybe I'm just lazy, but I ain't got that shit. I don't cover shit in bed sheets so they don't get dusty. Yeah, that must that's be a, fucking weird. Like, like 70s, 80s thing, bro. <laughs> All right, hold on. Okay, so, okay. Boom, 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 hey. Okay. <laughs> Dude, do you remember when the daughter, the daughter's sleeping and then Gary Busey's all walking through the house all sly and then he, the daughter sees him and he sees her and he like freezes and goes, oh. like this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then, But the daughter, the daughter is okay because he saved her ball. Right. But this is the first time. And then she comes into the room where the mom's sleeping and she goes, Mommy, mommy, I saw a man. And then mom go the mom goes, Oh, it's just a dream. Go back to sleep. And she goes back to sleep. I'm like, what? If my daughter if, if my daughter came to me in the middle of the night and went, Daddy, I saw a man. I was like, I'd get up where? And I'd write and, and find out and I would investigate. And I would keep asking her questions. I'm like, bro, there's one thing. I, I even wrote it down. I wrote it down because I had to say it about the scene. It's like, dude, yeah, kids 
and, and this this might not be any this might be some something that people that don't have kids probably won't think about but dude i've figured out that yeah kids are the the importance in their mind and the things that they think are are important or are scary or are difficult as an adult you think those things are just bullshit it's like dude who cares man you can who cares that your friend got mad at you you know stuff like that dude a big ass reason why they feel that way is because that's the most important thing and the most stressful thing they've ever dealt with. Like mm -hmm. think of your most stress, think of your most stressful thing you've ever done at work, right? And you're stressing out for a day. That kid's most f frustrating and stressful thing is be getting in a small fight with her friend. And it's like, dude, she holds it at that level as you will hold it at that level. So as soon as it a grown up as you, if you understand that, take your children seriously, no matter what it is. She was just like, it's just a dream. Yeah, take them seriously. For real. You know, it's funny, I, I have a, side, I have a side, uh, side note. I was at a party one time. I'm not gonna say any names or nothing, but um, I remember waking up at like six o'clock in the morning. Angela was, What? Angela Petteruti? Who's that? Oh no, I was just guessing. Okay. Names, I, I, just I, remember, I remember it was for a New Year's Eve party. And I remember, I think I, I crashed, I, I crashed out on, on the sofa somewhere. And I remember these two kids came up to me at six in the morning. They said, where's my dad? <laughs> and I was like, what? They're all, we can't find our dad. And I, I would never, ever say, it's just a dream. Go back to bed. Like <laughs> I got up and I was like, fuck, where's your dad? And so I remember scouring everywhere. I was like, fuck, man. Like, and then the first thing I did is I checked the swimming pool. I was like, oh, no, dude. I, I don't want to see, like, a floating body in the swimming pool, bro. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, long story short, the dad ended up crashing in another room somewhere. And we found out where the dad was. But, yeah, I can only imagine what it's like to have kids and, you know, something traumatic happens. You got to fucking be a parent, man. Even if you're not a parent kids need your help no matter what time it is you got to help them you can't just go tell True. them go back to bed take them seriously people take them seriously all right so where the hell are we at in this damn uh, movie? We're, we're all over the place but it's all right it's all right um i think we're at can we uh, talk about can we talk about when thomas gets talk caught about it, talk about any scene you want thomas oh. opens up the panty drawer and he starts <laughs> hugging the pill Bro, when he was hugging the pillow on the bed, it was so funny. Dude, I have that in my notes, dude. But he's just, he's hugging it. He puts his leg around it. So he's caressing the pillow. <laughs> and then he opens up the drawer and like, he like finds all the panties and he's just like. <laughs> uh, that was a good scene, dude. <laughs> it was. It was. Uh, okay, hold on. Where are we at right now? Okay. Uh... Uh, but I was I was going to mention, so the husband cheats on the wife, right? And I guess they have a, uh, they have a housewarming party in their new house. And the mm -hmm. husband's talking to a friend or coworker. I don't know who the hell he's talking to. But he's talking to her, to him, about how he's, doesn't like his marriage and how he's seen, seen someone on the side, et cetera, et cetera, not many words. And I'm looking at this and, and even after, I think right after that, there's a scene where he comes home late from work and he gets upset at her because all she wants to do is try to fix the house and get things ready. And he gets all upset that she's obsessed with the house. And it truthfully, it doesn't make any sense. His reasoning for cheating on his wife is the stupidest reasoning I've ever seen. You have a wife that doesn't have a job that stays home with the kid and keeps the house clean. And she also takes care of all the house business, like exterminators, uh, contractors. My dude, she does everything. What's wrong with her? Why would you go cheat on her? Because she's doing too much? That doesn't make any sense. The dude's an idiot. Oh, yeah, the fight. The fight that happens like 40 minutes in. He yeah. says, you're just concentrating too much on the house, not me or something bullshit. <laughs> but it was bullshit. I'm like, dude. But he's already cheating on her. He's That's already cheating on her, dude. 
trying to make it seem it's like it's her. He's just fighting to fight. <clears throat> right, dude. What a douche. Yeah, that guy was that guy's very douchey, but I do remember him being in hella movies. He's a very dude, familiar what actor. Other was he in though. What? What other movies were, was he in? We have to I I don't know. You should look it up right now. I should. Dude, I want to say thank you for Nutpack, Guitar Bick, and Red Bomb Triple Three for watching all the way up to now. Really appreciate, really appreciate that. Much, much fucking love. Thank you. And I think this is the first time. Oh, he's gone. He's gone. I guess he didn't like my. <laughs> He's back. Hold on. <laughs> I, I, I checked to see, like, who's still viewing. You know what's so... <laughs> you look like you're on a road. You know what's so annoying? Bro, I, it's, it's, it's every, it happens every time. I go to check who's watching, and, like, someone starts a live, and then I, like, touch their live. <laughs> Not by, like, by mistake, and okay. then I go to their it's right live. To it. It's right next to it. Yeah. The, the live button's right next to it, so yeah. Okay. So, sorry, guys. I Look, I just wanted to say we appreciate <laughs> you guys. Thank you so much. Um, so, Any other, I think... Anything else? No, just... It doesn't matter. Let's just go in every different direction. What else you got? What other notes did you write down that we need to talk uh, Gary about? You see, Gary Busey... Uh, where's the husband's uh robe? And he like re he, dude, he's such a weirdo, bro. He like <laughs> he 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 like wears the husband's stuff. He puts on the robe that has the husband's fucking uh his uh initials, and then he comes down the stairs, bro. And there that one girl Rita's there, and she's yeah. like, "That's uh, that's her husband's robe." And he's like, "Oh, uh." She didn't tell you? Oh, uh, yeah, we're together. <laughs> and then he, like, and then he, like, like, tries to shut her up. Oh, shout out to 10-foot player. 10-foot players in the motherfucking house. Hey, man, let me just say this. There's not a lot of rappers that I fuck with. But that, that boy, 10-foot player, is somebody to watch, man. I'm telling you, watch, hey. 10 foot player go to his instagram add him he works over at burners on hate he's the fucking man 100 plays a day og bobby kush all that stuff check it out um so what was i talking about where did i go what were you talking about? oh were you talking he sees rita and rita starts calling him out on his shit and he like tries to shut her up and then he just uh. like accidentally breaks or breaks her neck <laughs> and he does the fucking real quick fucking the real quick fucking bury again like that's just barrier i buried that other guy hella fast <laughs> right and he does it by accident every time and he also he kills <laughs> and he goes oh oh no and he goes oh no and then he like caresses her dead body yeah, he's, he's just like like like, like, it, like he kills her and then he's just like it's okay it's okay <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? You fucking weirdo. Oh, shit. That's hilarious, bro. <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on. How do we What's let 10-foot player in the discussion? Oh, shit. Okay, let's see here. Oh, here we go. I didn't even see that. Here we go. It's comes. always fun when we get somebody to join. Always fun. Let's go! <laughs> Let's go! What movie are you guys talking about? Hider, Hider in the House. Hider in the House with Gary Busey. With Gary Busey. <laughs> have you seen it? Fuck, I, I have not seen it. <laughs> I, didn't, I haven't seen it either. Usually, most of the time, I've seen it. <laughs> Usually, hey, 10-Foot Player has a fucking massive fucking DVD collection. I've seen it, dude. Oh. My 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 guy I work with was talking about we we're talking about weird fucked up movies like seen that he goes have you seen Tusk and I was like no oh I've seen Tusk 
you have. Oh. Yes. Oh, man. <laughs> the <laughs> ending? With that one of my fish and shit. Like, what? That, you know, that movie, that, oh, my. <laughs> with the teeth? Oh, hold on. Hey, he has to with the teeth. Hey, look, look. He's like this. Remember at the end? Yeah. His eyes are wide like a bro. Oh, bro. fuck. Dude, uh, that movie. Uh, hey, what about the walrus fight? Like, that dude really put on a suit? Like, I, bro, oh. that movie was disturbing. Dude, no, like, um, <laughs> you know who's in that movie? Which is really funny is Johnny Depp is in that movie. Yeah. And he plays like this weird fucking detective. Right? Yeah. Wow, dude, Tusk. Holy fuck. My buddy just told me about work i didn't watch the whole thing watch like tusk in like five minutes or so you know what i mean like it, it broke down the movie pretty well bro. i don't need to see it i fucking saw it without... do the same the same guy the same guy in like, tusk was the same guy in uh jeepers creepers who's that yeah. actor uh i don't know i don't know his name you want me to find out or what yeah find out he used to be in the Apple commercials, like right when the iPhone first came out. Jeepers, well, he was also in Dodgeball. Jeepers, yes, true. I thought, good movie. Cheers to that. Okay, so I want to know, both of you, first horror movie that you ever finished, watched, finished, little kid. Because if you're a kid, there's that moment of your life where you finally you find out what a movie is. And then you actually stand up the challenge. Of right. As I know what child, mine is. As a yeah. child, every time I was shown Freddy and shit, <clears throat> I'd be out. And I yeah. Finish. No, no, you're right. You're right. I finished the shit, right? So yeah. I marked back to which movie was the first one that I got through. I had walked way walk with a homie. I, I was young as fuck. We were, and it was somebody's older brother was watching the shit, right? It was Chucky or one. Okay. Child's play one, and I was scared, but I also couldn't look away. You yeah. know, there, there's two. There's two for oh, me, yeah. and I can't remember. Well, actually, I'll tell you that the first one was. Uh, I remember as a kid, my dad used to always rent VHS tapes, and it was Jaws 3D. And oh, I remember I, I, I finished watching. I was so scared of the movie when I used to watch Jaws. I have to sit on the couch and sit Indian style because I didn't want my legs hey, dangling. Hey, crisscross applesauce, bro. What? Crisscross applesauce. Crisscross applesauce. So Jaws 3? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> no, I was scared of pools at hotels when they would be partially covered. If you see a shadow under the water, I was scared of that. Yeah. <laughs> I was scared of that because of Jaws. What's the other one, Kenny? Uh, and then the second one was on Beta. My good friend Anthony, who I grew up with down the street in Daly City, his older sister, who was hot back then, and she always bragged about her fucking boyfriend having a six-inch dick. Like, she's like, oh, my boyfriend has a six-inch dick. And I was <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, I'm just like, a, like, I'm like, not even like, I'm like fucking 12, 11 years old. And I was like, what the fuck? And she's like, you want to see a scary movie? And I was like, yeah, like I'm with Anthony. And she's like, all right, we're going to go to our friend, my friend's house. And we and went up the block. My we, friend shows up? No, we went, <laughs> up to, we went up the block. And her friend was, was hot too back then. What was and it? her friend had a beta player. And we watched The Shining on beta. And I remember after watching that movie, I, yeah, as a kid, I remember the, the bathtub scene fucked me up in the head, dude. Yeah. Bad. Dude. What? Yeah. what? Mine wasn't too scary, but I, the first one I watched all the way through was The Lost Boys, and I would that was I, that's still a great movie. That, that's it, an excellent movie. It's and I would watch it every year. Like I'd have sleepovers on Halloween because my birthday's the day before, and it was always we're watching Lost Boys before we go to sleep, and right. that was. I lived, lived up like, like literally thirty seconds from that bridge. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I, like I was already obsessed with that movie, but also had like, yeah, you know what I mean. Like I've been on edge so many times in my life because mm -hmm. I, growing up, yeah, 
you get it. But, yeah. yeah, dude. How scared? How, dude, I love that movie. How scared would you be as an actor hanging off the fucking bottom of that bridge? Dude? They have something set up. You know what I mean? But still, fuck. No, no, it's not. It's been over there. It doesn't look treacherous, bro. Oh, okay. I, okay. I, <laughs> dude, you yeah, don't. I've seen, I've walked every, fine, bro. Mm. Fine. It's all the fog, I guess, you know? Yeah. Also, the reason uh, why it was significant with uh, finishing a horror movie, right? Like, yeah. from going from little kid who's never <laughs> movie to a kid who saw the ending right to me before like bailing it when bailing scary or whatever you never see the ending which is the person like loses event you know they like die. right look like oh shit like it's all good they kill you know what i mean like no light at the end of the tunnel like now you know made me Outlook with watching scary. Movies. I kind of realize it, you know, like Jason. These guys might kill Jason. I watched the fuck out of Jason. Actually. Yeah, uh, they would be on watch Jason. Couldn't couldn't look away from it. Right. So there's plenty of times where I put on Freddy uh, Nightmare on Elm Street movies and never finished them. Plenty of times. Heard me, bro. Yeah. Legitimately. So, but now nowadays we just watch right through them and doesn't even bother. <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't. I have not fucked with those movies really, bro. Like at all. Like I don't know them. I don't know why. I just I never. I mean, I tried watching that uh, newer Freddy when it was I. Yeah, it, I haven't even seen that one. I did, watch, yeah. uh, I did watch that Freddy vs. Jason shit, and that was dope. That was good. That was good. I was a big I, fan. I feel like because I'm watching all the Jason movies I watch, you know what I mean? I need to watch that again. It, I, I need to watch that movie again. They played, yeah, they played in, I thought they did really good on that. Like, that movie gave you everything you wanted out of it. You know what I mean? It gave yeah. you out of it. You And you definitely wanted the mm -hmm. iconic, I mean, Jason and Freddy, obviously. You want that right. What's your guys' thoughts on the Jason, uh, what was it, Jason in Space? Jason X. Jason X. I love it. What I about you, 10-foot player? It was, it, was so, it was so stupid, it was great. <laughs> yeah, but it reminds me of the Leprechaun in Space shit. <laughs> oh, my God. That one's way worse. Yeah, I, just, I mean, that. I, so I was really big on those Leprechaun movies, and the one <laughs> based on, like, why? What is, Dude, who is, okay, hey, who is the, um... Who is the actress in the first Leprechaun? She's hella famous. Oh, I can't... Jennifer, Jennifer Aniston. What? Who? Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer Aniston. Wow. This new right away. Jennifer Aniston. The wow. Great because out and you see the end of the rainbow in his little lair. That's yeah. what go <laughs> in. Dead. Right. What? Which? I, okay. What? Which Leprechaun? Right. Who steals what? me cold? Try, <laughs> try as they will, try as they might. Who steals me cold won't live through the night. <laughs> it's that little evil laugh. Which, which <laughs> leprechaun was the hey. one where Ice T was in the bathroom and he he left in, left in the hood? That's my favorite one. Oh shit, bro! My Fun buddy, fact: Buddy got me that for my birthday back in the day. Leprechaun in the hood. That movie's the shit. He goes so. He goes, we got to get him stoned off these four-leaf clovers. <laughs> dude, that was the shit. Oh, that, that dude. The same leprechaun who played Willow played Leprechaun. What? The same actor who played Willow played what Leprechaun. Warwick Davis, of course. Yeah. He's the greatest little actor of all time. You know what I mean? Yeah. And many Wait, hold on. Meyer 420 back up. Crashed out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Fire 420 backup says handicap gunny handicap gummy joke up. What does that mean? That's his strain. Handicap. That's the handicap hustler. You remember the handicap hustler? Oh, okay. Yeah, so he good got knowledge. His, he got his fucking he got his strain into my club, Meyer, you know what I'm saying? And I sold the fuck out of it, Kenny. 
people were like, yeah, we're sold out of Myers' weed because the champ was in there. There you go. Throwing fastballs. <laughs> All right, hey, hey, 10-foot player. Geeter. Before, before, before anything, uh, me, me and Josh, we're going to do the review on the movie. But before anything, it, do you want to give yourself a, a, like a plug right now with your music? What's going on, yeah. man? Uh, what's going on with the music? I fucking did a two sing a video here. That's my first year. The goal this year is a ten track album. And, yeah, let's go. And nice. so, what videos do you have out right now? I just got the video for a hundred plays. And then you just put out the the Bobby Hill, right? Bobby Hill song, yeah, just the song. Okay, so, okay. Back out. Um, there are rumors that there might be a K. De Niro and 10-foot player track in the future. You know yes. what I'm saying? I am retired. I am retired, but you know your boy will come out of retirement anytime for you, bro. Well, there, there, are, uh, there are answers to the rumors that K. De Niro is on the bucket list. There you go. You know what I mean? Boom. He's, all, he's been on the bucket list, motherfuckers. Motherfuckers. Yeah. Oh, know this. I feel it. Hey, so are we going to do the – One thing real quick. You guys yeah. – right? Have you guys bowled? Bowled? Yeah. 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 So do you guys do like a one arm like that? Uh-huh. That's how you well, get it. Yeah. Yeah, one – normally a one arm. I can't get no spin going, though. Fucking – I come at it like this, and I do in it. <laughs> bro, I, I gotta see this, bro. I gotta see this, bro. Dude, people, hey, whenever I bowl, people, hella people look over at me and shit, and I'm like, "What? You're don't be jealous. Don't be jealous. Don't right? Be jealous? I knocked them all down. Don't be jealous. Oh my god! You gotta record yourself next time and put it up, man, and just say this is how you're supposed to bowl. Tag yeah. us, tag us, and we'll put on our story. <laughs> so, what were you guys reviewing? Uh, Hider in the House with Gary Busey. Okay, go ahead, proceed. <laughs> go ahead, proceed. <laughs> go, so, um, any more, any more things to say about the movie, Kenny, in your notes? Um, uh, so, oh, my notes are packed. Uh, hold on, hold on. So, basically, my notes um, are basically, Gary Busey, Scary Busey, a.k.a. Thomas Sykes, um, kills Rita for, you know, finding out that he lives there without them knowing he's frogging. And um, he gets mad because the husband, the husband comes back and bangs her. And obviously, you know, Thomas Sykes is upstairs. Here's what's going on. And he starts to go fucking delirious. And um, I meant noteworthy notes. Um, I mean, I, I think we're ready for the review, dude. I, I think we No, but and anything that you missed that you need to say, though, about the movie. I like, think we're, I mean, the ending, what happens? Besides what the story is, besides what the story is. I, I think, you know, Gary Busey could have been a little bit more Gary Busey. I, I wish I would have seen him wig out a little bit more. Um, I wish I, you know, he's, he's very famous for having the fucked up hair and the red face and like, and the you know, perfect talk. teeth. And the what? perfect teeth. Yeah, you know, and um, I just, look, man, like, it, it it was a it was a like it almost was like a lifetime movie but with Gary Busey. <laughs> so the end, the end basically. There's one thing I gotta say about the end is when he brings he brings Julie up to his little attic and throws her on the ground and he starts pouring gasoline all over her. It's <laughs> that lantern, right? And he holds the lantern and he goes like this. He stares at her and he goes like this. He's like this. He's like. <laughs> lantern back and forth. Going like this. <laughs> it was. That was that was my favorite part, dude. With him and the lantern, like, really trying to, like, get her scared for dumping just to crack the lantern on her and burn the whole house down. Dude, every time I see somebody with a lantern, I feel like I'm in a buggy. At Disneyland and the fu the fucking haunted house ride, <laughs> an actual gas lantern. Yeah. Yep. All right. Um, basically, what happens at the end is Gary Busey they get into a big fight. He tries to take out the husband, and instead, the wife comes out, shoots her. He falls down the stairs. Boom. Basically, that's it. 
comes back for a second scare, pretends he's dead, comes back up for a second scare, cops swing the door open, boom, shoot him in the back, movie over. Movie's over. Right? Anything else? Uh, I think we, you know, we pretty much explained the whole um, Thomas Sykes frogging affair with the family. You know, he tries to relive uh, the life that he could never live, and he still is a, a complete sociopath. We see shades of him being nice when he tries to help save the ball when it goes into the uh, pool. He tries to help coach up this son because he is getting bullied. But at the end of the day, he falls in love with, with the wife, and he lets emotions get ahead of him, and that's where everything starts to fall. And at the end, he fucks up, and he gets a Killed. Uh, right. Uh, All right. So before we give our final review, I wanted to ask 10 foot player your opinion of Gary Busey. What do you think of Gary Busey? I love him. He's in point. Yeah. You know, yeah. Okay. He got, yeah, he got old and crazy and shit. Yeah. I, probably, <laughs> I probably would too if you gave me all that money. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> At the end of the day, I like Gary Busey. Yeah. yeah. I'm a Gary Busey fan as well. But Kenny, Gary Busey fan? I am. I am. I, hey, a.k.a. Scary Busey. There you go. So one so, thing, my buddy, uh, his mom is like really unattractive lesbian lady. <laughs> <laughs> and, so he calls himself the son of Busey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Very self-aware. It's hella funny, bro. She really <laughs> like dude. All right. So uh all right, Kenny, since I chose the movie, I'll I'll do the first rating. So um I actually I, I'm a I, I like I like Gary Busey in this man. I did. I thought the acting was done very well. Um it was pretty bullshit though about how he was able to creep around the house without being noticed and all that shit. But maybe Maybe because I'm a little bit biased because of because of Gary Busey, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and give this a three out of five stars. Wow, I am um, big big fan of the Buse, bro. So let's see how let's see how you're gonna give this thing, man. Um. Uh, oh, hold on. Shout out to Lisette. What's up, Lisette? Thank you for joining me, horror movie dad, and the motherfucking homie, ten foot player. If you ain't knowing about him, check him out. Uh, this is my review for the movie Hide Her in the House with Go for Gary it. Busey. Hitler right. in the house. Hitler in the house. AKA Hitler in the house, depending if you are. Um, if you can't read right. If you can't read right, like me. <laughs> uh, my review of the movie is pretty simple. I like Gary Busey, but I felt like this was a lifetime movie. And. Oh. Um, <laughs> and uh, I don't know, man. If Gary Busey was not in this movie, and if it was anyone else, I would have gave it a fucking zero out of five. But okay, no, don't let my review change your mind. No, I am going to give this movie a one point five out of five. All right, all right, there we you go. You know what I mean? I I, I like I I could have I would have given it a two, but the kill scenes in this movie were subpar, and he buries people way too quick. And there was no blood and lousy neck snapping. Um, the exterminator scene was laughable. But Gary Busey is still Gary Busey. So I'm going to give it a 1.5. If the kills were better, I would have maybe gave it like a 2.5 or a 2. But that is just the final verdict, man. I, I, I like the movie, but I found myself surfing my phone while I was watching it because I got bored a lot. And the go. only times that I was... A paying attention was when Gary Busey was acting. So yeah, I get it. You're 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 a, a child that went through a traumatic experience and you killed your parents and you fucking want to live through another family and you're frogging. But hey, at the end of the day, I want to see some blood and guts, and it didn't do it for me. Wrong movie. Five. Wrong movie for it. It. it didn't do it for me. That's great. There you go. All right. Hide her in the house. Done, bro. <laughs> so what's so what's next? Um, 
Well, that's going to be my pick. I got to figure it out. All right. So um, anyway, if you just joined us or you joined us halfway through or whatever, don't worry about it. Uh, this is going to be on my IGTV, Horror Movie Dad, on Instagram. And then a couple weeks from now, or a week, probably a week from now, it'll be on my YouTube channel, Dad Watches Horror Movies. So check it out. I want to thank 10-Foot Player for joining in. What's up, bro? And K. De Niro, as always, it's good to see you, man, every time. We'll be doing this in two weeks from now again, and Kenny will be choosing our movie. Right? Yes. Any last words? Uh, thank you for joining 10-Foot Player and being a fucking pure player and, you know, asking to come and join the party. And, yep. hey, you're here. So, um, in the future, if you want to join again, feel free, my guy. Right. And anyone else, if we're doing this D3 Live, there's no script. We just talk bullshit about a movie, go off on side tangents, have guests. Anyone else want to join during our next one, just tap in and say you want to join. You're in. We can do four at a time. We can do two. We can do one. We can do nothing. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So, all right. Peace out, guys. All right, guys. Yeah. Peace.